Okay, thank you very much, Daniela. Um, I'm very happy to, to be here with you and to, to tell you something about this. Um, um, in my picture, uh, the background is already uh, a black soldier fly, a fly that you also see on this first slide. And I'm going to share with you some phenomenal perspectives of this fly that can contribute to food security through a circular uh, agriculture. And my, my story is based on uh, research experiences and, um, in, in both Kenya, where I coordinated uh, a roadstock project in the climate change program. Um, and you see on the left uh, a smallholder farmer who produces these black soldier flies for her own chickens. Um, Marcel, your connection was dropped. Can you still hear me? Uh, yes, please. Okay, so. Um, on the left hand side in Kenya, a smallholder farmer who produces these flies herself uh, as feed for her chicken. Um, in the middle, you see a farmer in Colombia who has started producing flies and he's next to uh, the cages. He produces them for fish feed. And on the right hand side, you see uh, a company in the Netherlands that was opened last year by the king of the Netherlands that produces a black soldier fly on a large scale. And so we can use this for various scales. And uh, why are insects so in interesting in this? Well, this insect is like a lot of other insects. It's a species that lives of all kinds of dead organic materials. And dead organic materials that we commonly call waste could be upgraded by this insect to be a, a very valuable component of uh, livestock feed. Next slide. If we look at current uh, sources of protein in uh, food and feed, then these are two uh, main sources, fish meal uh, for one and soy meal or other plant meals uh, as other sources. Well, for fish meal, it's increasingly limited because uh, the amount of fish available in the oceans is decreasing. And so there's a big biodiversity issue there also in using fish meal uh, uh, to enhance uh, protein sources for, for feed that we need for, grow, for feeding the growing world population. When we look at soy meal then, well, soy um, can be used as food as well. So using soy for, for livestock uh, competes with food and also increasing production goes at the expense of uh, cutting forests in South America to produce it, this source. So also some issues with that. If we look at, at present at the agricultural land, then we see that about 70% of agricultural land is used to produce uh, livestock. And that's not because the livestock themselves use so much space, but it's especially the feed components for the livestock. Only 30% of agricultural land at present is used to produce food. Um, next slide. And given the projections of the FAO that we need more food for the, the growing world population, uh, the calculations of the FAO are that from 2013 to 2050, we need about plus 70% of uh, feed intake. And uh, at this moment, already 33% of all cereals used, uh, produced is used for feed. That would need to, uh, to go to 50%. And if we look at the pigs, chicken, and aquaculture, then also there's a big increase in, uh, in soy need, needed to, per, to increase the production of these monogastrics. That means that we have a big challenge. And the next slide. But at the same time, we know that several of the livestock and fish that we produce, uh, their ancestors were very eager in eating insects. And if you uh, provide insects to, to these three animals, pigs or chicken or fish, they'll be very happy to eat them. Um, if you've ever given live mealworms or uh, fly, fly larvae to, to chicken, they go crazy once they get them. Uh, and in fact, what we're doing at the moment when we give them a diet, a diet that's vegetarian, that's not what their original diet was. So these animals might use insects in, in their diet. And that provides a very nice opportunity. Next slide. In the report that Votro produced, there's this slide. And this slide shows something that common people would call waste. This is uh, vegetable fruit waste uh, on a market. But this is not waste. This is a very valuable input on which you can rear uh, insects. And in order to 
use this? Well, you, you need to develop new ways of producing uh, a new source for, for feed. And some of the issues associated with that that we had in the project that we carried out in Kenya uh, in uh, the context of the Votro project was that we started with, um, with the authorities to make a legal embedding to make sure that uh, there was a law that uh, enabled insects to be used as feed. We were making quality standards. But what we saw during the process was also that something that was called waste and that common people thought of waste turned into a valuable uh, commodity. And so also there, um, there was competition now all of a sudden between different sort of different uh, goals that, that these wastes could be used for. And so you started to see a waste stream economy where prices sometimes even went up uh, when the, the demand was high. That's something that, that we need to consider. If we think of waste management, then on the left hand side in this slide, you see that when we produce crops on the left hand side, uh, when we produce animals for, for uh, livestock, they all go to food. But the production of crops, the production of livestock, and the production of food all uh, also result in waste. And this, at this moment, we call that waste and it's usually discarded, sometimes in landfills, uh, sometimes nothing is really being done with it. Whereas if we take that same uh, picture, but now we include in the middle bottom production of insects, we can produce insects on the waste that both crops, food, and livestock uh, yield. If we produce the insects there, we can use the insects either as food or as feed. And then there's a, a smaller uh, amount of bio waste uh, produced, but it's, it's much smaller than the original bio waste, of course, because the most uh, of the previous bio waste is turned into food and feed. But the other bio waste is now a valuable source also as a fertilizer for, for crops. And with this, when we add the insect production, you really close the circle. And using insects as feed proved in our project really valuable. Um, here you see one example where um, we investigated the effects of inclusion of black soldier flies in diet. And from the left to the right, there's more and more black soldier flies that's replacing fish meal. And what you see is the weight gain of the pigs um, increased with the amount of dietary protein that came from black soldier fly. So it's certainly the same or even increasing when you use black soldier flies. If we then go to the, the last slide, um, one of, my, of the questions that I was asked was whether um, closing the circle would interfere with other uh, goals that we have. Well, here I uh, depicted some of the uh, sustainable development goals. And all of these stable development goals will be increased and you can make a contribution to these by closing the circle by using insects. And I don't have the time to go in all, to, all of these details, but anyone that wants to, to ask me on what I mean with one of these uh, SDGs being improved can do so uh, later on. If I wrap up, then um, I think in order to make this happen, we need to make sure that we have a legal framework in the countries where this is being organized. And then what if we take a two uh, pronged route to this? One is that we start bottom up with individual farmers that are being trained by local farmers. And so a training of training program. At the same time, we also need um, bigger companies that can uh, also take up the, the, the produced uh, insects within feed mills and their bigger companies, uh, both local and international, might also play a role. And um, in that sense, I, I see that there's a good way of co-creation with local farmers, local companies, and international companies in making this change happen. That's where I would like to stop.